All right, welcome everyone to Monday equals MC squared, where Masami and Chris are here, I guess us. <laughs> and today is June 28th. Um, thank God. Thank God June is over. This has been a kind of a rough one for maybe many of you, but it was very challenging for me for sure. And, um, you know, it's not just the Mercury retrograde, finally Mercury went direct, but um, it's just kind of like I'm still sweeping the aftermath of a party or something that I really wasn't even invited to. And I got pulled into the cleaning crew or something like that. So it's been crazy. And it feels like things are sad, starting to land where they need to. But I would love to know if it was really tough for you guys or not. Um, I would even say the last, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm clearly saying six months or so since this year started, it's been challenging because I feel like things are shifting so fast on the cosmic level on an energetic field and vibrationally, it's just shifting, shifting so tremendously fast that I just feel like I don't have the time to catch my breath at times. And, you know, I shared with you the couple of weeks ago, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I went into this major vertigo and I really struggled with my own energy for 24 hours straight. And then I felt a whole lot better felt like my system rebooted. Um, I felt the sense of, wow, this is what it is to come home to myself for a little bit while the world is spinning. And so what I'm sensing is that there's a little bit of a pull, push pull happening. My body can't seem to recalibrate fast enough for the shifts that are happening. It is aware that it's shifting. It wants to go with it but it requires a little bit of um, pauses and sometimes just stopping, taking some time off, turning things off, getting a little more sleep. So that's definitely, I feel like I'm finally caught up to sleep, literally like yesterday. I feel like I got caught up to my sleep for this year. So if you're feeling any of these things, be gentle, be kind, be understanding of that it's okay to unplug. It's okay to let the recalibration happen. That can take a little bit of time. And sometimes just unplugging for the day and not listening to any more things, not uh, watching any more YouTubes or, you know, turning on your TV shows or whatever, or signing up for more courses. I think that's extremely important. So I talked to one of my clients this morning and she was telling me how she's been working on this FOMO idea. So fear of missing out. And she said that was something that she really has been able to let go of since COVID started. And then since this year, she's been really much better about that. So um, that has, when she shared that with me, I felt the sense of um, opening that was happening to her felt really nice to be in her presence because before I felt like she was always searching, searching, getting more, learning more, be more, do more. And it was just causing her to block herself, causing her from not even moving forward with her business ideas and getting things going. And one other thing that I wanted to mention too is that really look into your tendencies towards perfectionism. And always remember that the, you're here to practice life. That's why in yoga, we say you're practicing yoga, right? We never say yoga perfection. Like let's go into a yoga perfection, downward dog. Okay. So come back, come back to saying, this is just the practice. This is the theater that we all share together. We all play different parts and we're just rehearsing together. We're practicing together. This is not something that we have to do perfectly at once, okay? And last thing I wanted to share with, with you about this client this morning was that 
Um, and I got a permission from her to speak about this. And she's been pretty stuck about trying to get her business going and her website going. And so I said, well, how's that going? Because we've been working on this slowly, body, mind, spirit to make her business go this way. And she said, well, you know, I'm going to have a conversation with the um, astrology specialist next week. And that's going to determine the date for me to start something. And then I just kind of stopped her. I said, you know, every business, like think of a restaurant, okay? When the restaurant starts, restaurant will have the windows that are like covered with brown papers and it says coming soon, right? Always says coming soon. It doesn't say it's open. Like there's a coming soon time that it's okay to be in it's coming soon moment. And so don't wait till the, the website is perfect. And Chris and I have learned this because when we put our websites live many years ago, so many glitchy things, certain links don't work. And I get an email from somebody, hey, I was trying to order this supplement, it's not working. Or your picture is so blurry, I can't even see it. Or I try to click on your blog, but couldn't even open. Like, okay, coming soon. It's maybe it's always somewhat coming soon. But if you don't put the sign up and say, I'm coming up, I'm, I'm coming up, whether I'm perfectly dressed and matched up with my socks or not, doesn't matter. And I get inspiration sometimes from the times that I used to work for schools and, you know, Chris was a school teacher and a, he was a vice principal of a school, K through 12. And I remember when I used to teach little kids meditation and yoga and body awareness practices, I would look at their outfits and I just start cracking up because their outfits just are like, you know, coming soon kind of outfits. None of them matched. Socks were all over the place, like size and shapes. And one had stripes and the other one was polka dots. And one shoe was a different color and the other one. And they just didn't care. They showed up. So, you know, I think that's kind of where we're at right now. This past six months, it's been like coming soon, coming soon. We're preparing, we're preparing. Um, but don't wait for the perfect moment when the astrology and star systems all line up. Because when I was talking to her, I got this hit. I looked at her and I said, listen, I said, you may not even, you might not have come from this planet to begin with. So who cares about the astrology that the, we think of astrology from this earthly matter? Maybe you don't even come from the same galaxy. You might be from a totally different system. And maybe from that planet, they use a totally different planetary you know, organizations. And we were just cracking up and she was just like, oh my God, that feels right. Like just, you're right. So why am I waiting for the astrology, all the star systems to line up? You know what? Carpe diem, really. Let's do it. Shop is not quite open yet, but it's coming soon and it's almost there. Almost there is good enough. So that's kind of how I feel as the June is ending. The, for me too, there's a lot of kind of a deep darkness that I went through. And this, this over the past three weeks or so, but particularly last 10 days. And that's why I picked the topic of what makes you shimmer what makes you shimmer and what makes you shine is because I was actually in a little bit of darkness and Chris even pointed it out that as the mercury retrograde was showing my old patterns, I was being super critical of myself and more critical I became and more stuck I became with old narratives and patterns and belief systems and perspectives my body became very, very congested. And I was struggling with constipation, excess earwax. <laughs> Just telling you everything that happened to me. Okay. But gooey stuff out of my eyes, my gums in my mouth started to inflame. I'm like, what is going on? My lymphatic system were congested, socks marks on my ankles. I was so congested. Because who knows, it's the chicken or an egg kind of a question, isn't it? Was I congested in my body? That's why my mind and my thinking brain became congested. 
And I just ruminated over the same thing, this and this and that. And it was just old, old conversations that I would have about myself and the very critical voice too. And, but I have to say this morning, I, it took me a while to send, send you all emails about today's topic because one, I was just like, how, what am I here to share today? And so I sat with it. And after today's morning, beautiful bowel movements that I have had, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm shimmering. I'm shining. I felt it. I see it in my face, in my dark thoughts, went down the toilet, literally and figuratively. So <laughs> I just, I just wanted to start there. Okay. Chris, do you have anything to share? Now that I've shared all my secrets. Well, you always make it hard to follow on after you, but uh, I think one of the things <clears throat> that also came up even just in the last couple of days around this topic that's made me think about uh, tendencies that, that maybe all of us can identify with, but we were moving some furniture around from one room to another and reorganizing a space and in the process of doing that, inevitably, it seems like there, there are always tangles of wires. You notice that cords and wires and things everywhere. And then they have dust all over them because they're behind things that you never can get to to clean. And so it's, you know, just looking at that and looking at the process of change, it just keeps striking me how much so many of us say, you know, I really want change in my life. I really want to have a different experience. But the funny thing is nothing can change unless you change things. You know, you have to move things around. You have to be willing to move in a different way and disturb the order. I think that's the most challenging part is disturbing the familiar order. And that that's something that our brains and our bodies don't particularly like. In fact, they hate it. They hate it when we disturb the order. And so we can feel ourselves resisting change, even as we're saying that we crave it and we wish it. And so that's, that's just something to think about. And another thing that, that uh, Masami reminded me of is this idea of perfectionism. And this is something that uh, I can relate to because for me, for many, 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 many years, since I was a little kid, uh, I always felt like I had to put on a good show. And so for me, I was really obsessive around my external, my, my appearance and how I, how I face the world. And so for me, there's this, um, just right on this topic that we're going to get to today, the internal drive that you have and the wish that you have and the desires that you are wanting to fulfill they have to match up with how you face the world. And so for me, all those times when I was obsessed with perfectionism and wanting to have everything just right and in perfect order anytime I showed myself to the world, well, that didn't match up because on the inside, I was a complete mess. You know, I was a disaster at times where I couldn't even hold it together. You know, just after, after the, uh, whatever it was that I was showing up for, you know, I, I really wasn't worth that much. I couldn't get myself organized or, you know, pull my energy together in the same direction. And so, so much of this topic is about, you can see these two things that I just brought up have to do with shaking things up and moving and working through the discomfort of that. And I'll just say one last thing before we really jump into this topic, but uh, Masami mentioned my background in education, which I did for about a decade. And one of the ideas in education in terms of how the brain learns is this idea that learning only happens in a state of disequilibrium. Okay, just I'll say that one more time. Learning only happens in a state of disequilibrium, meaning you have to be off kilter, out of balance, confused, feeling upside down, all of those things are necessities in order for you to actually imprint new information that you can retain and remember and use. So 
that feeling of discomfort that comes up that we resist so naturally and we we start to make up stories about it well i don't i don't want this i didn't like that i didn't ask for this this isn't who i am that's all part of the natural defense system that's part of our body and our brain saying i don't like to have my comfort disturbed okay so if you can actually sit in that discomfort long enough to actually see what's coming at you and where it's where it's starting to guide you. Maybe it's pointing you in a whole new direction that you never could see before. If you can just hold it and acknowledge that you're uncomfortable, that's fine. Be uncomfortable. But see if you can stick with it. And and I will pass the mic back to Masami for leading into our topic today. Yeah, thank you, Chris, for sharing that. And I think symbolically and Chris has gotten to know me enough we've been together for 17 years that he knows I change furnitures around and redecorate the, the space at least twice a year and I mean like furniture's directions has to change the dining table has to go to the totally different place um and and so over the weekend we actually painted one of the rooms into a really darker blue, like the mountains that we get here. It's like a darker, darker blue. So we did that and we moved the sofa from the living room into that room. And so we did all this. And he didn't even complain once. And afterwards, he's like, oh, this is so nice. So, you know, I love doing that because one, you get to clean the dust from the back of the bookcases and we removed all the books and cleaned it all out, rearranged it, everything. And also growing up in Japan, like feng shui was so important to me. It's part of our lifestyles to really pay attention to where the flow is and where the stagnation is. And this room that we finally painted and cleaned happened to have flooding issues. We had an old 1950s green toilet and pink sink and the green toilet was dripping for God knows how long, but my body was starting to react to it. And then finally we figure it out. But by the time we figure it out, the ceiling had dropped too. So, but it was a really bad situation. But, you know, what happened was that we were able to clean it all out and repaint it, did the subfloors, took out all the walls. And by the way, Chris does all that. So, um, but please don't hire him as a handyman because we have too many projects to do in this house and he's not available for your house yet. <laughs> yet, okay. So, but anyway, he's shaking his head. It's like, no, please don't hire me. But anyway, we got it all done and the flow shifted instantly. The flow of our creativity started to come back. The feeling of settling, feeling of groundedness started to come back. So look around your environment as well. And there are two areas that the, my mom always, always mentioned and talked to me about growing up is that you might not be able to change the entire house. You can't just go and start painting the walls. But there are two areas that the, you really want to work on regularly. It's the front entry and what is the back entry like, okay, exit. And do you have things that are not, you know, make sure these are not cluttered area. You don't want to keep dirty shoes around. You don't want to have just like a coat hangers that's full of coats that you don't even wear anymore. Okay. Um, you don't want to have like half opened umbrellas, you know, stuck in a closet, something like that. Uh, you want to make sure that the front is swept. Okay. So I sweep my front practically every single day, just like my grandfather did. My grandfather will sweep the front and he will splash a little bit of water in the front. Um, one, that's because the old homes, they used to have kind of a dirt paths that led to the front door, but also it's to make sure it's not dusty for the gods to enter. So if you want the divine flow, you want to make sure that it's not dusty, it's easy to access. So when the divine the gods open up the door, they, they're not tripping over things, right? But make sure that the, your back door, so your mud room, you know, mud rooms tend to be really messy. Winter scarves and, you know, God knows what else might be stuck in some box. Go through them, okay? 
That's important. So entryways, number one. Number two is areas of your water. Water has very strong, I mean, every element has a strong, you know, strong as in has the power in and also the yin and yang. So there's a weakness too also. But one of the strengths about the water is that the water can wash things out but also it could get stagnant. It can start to create more mold. It could create other pathogenic stuff. It can create truly stagnated feelings in, inside you. So make sure that the water area is wiped down. It's always clean. Uh, sinks are not clogged up with your hair or you know, kind of things starting to grow on your sink. I mean, please don't wait till then. Toilets are clean. Um, the dishes are cleaned and put away. Those are a couple of the things, you know, the, maybe the rest of the things are not quite there. That's all, that might be okay. But those are two areas that my mom always said, the feng shui, these are the two areas that you need to pay close attention to entry, exit, and the waterways. Okay. So I wanted to say that. And then one last thing about recalibration we're all experiencing. I do think that more you're experiencing it now, like the depth that you're experiencing, more difficulties you might be going through right now in recalibrating, the more you are connected to the higher consciousness and the speed in which it's moving. So don't get um, despaired or don't judge yourself that, that you feel a little bit run down and exhausted and feel really low because maybe the depth of that difficulties are reflecting the height and the speed that the, you're about to recalibrate with okay so if you could see it that way and have a little more range of motion with your appreciation of what you're going through i think that would be helpful too and that'll lead to today's topic of what makes you shimmer okay what makes you shine? And it's been really fun, I have to say. And I work with clients somewhat long term. Many of them work with me years because um, a lot of things unfold. You know, it's like we're unfolding, like, you know, I guess a commonly used word would be the onion, right? We're peeling away to ourselves. But I have been able to encounter so many people in the last week that are, they're just shimmering. Like, they're just beautiful to be around, even across the Zoom screen. And they have been steadfastly, you know, they're doing little by little, but little step by step by step that is really accumulating to being an amazing shift that they're able to experience today. So I noticed like one lady, I, I got on the Zoom call and I was like, holy cow, your energy field is unbelievable um it was clear i can see her clear aura colors and then we were able to go past just doing food diet supplements sleep those are so important because they're basics but we are able to get into her past lives now and we're able to get into her ancestral energies and ancestral energies and um maybe i think in her case Maybe her grandmother came into the, uh, the session as well. But I get a question sometimes. People say, well, I want to sign up to do one-on-one, but can we talk about my ancestors? And I, I have to say, everyone, I have no um, way of deciding that. Your body decides what are the priorities. I don't get to decide. If you show up to a session and you had a one idea that, okay, she's just gonna talk about channeling my, you know, uh, family members that have moved to the next realm. I might say, well, maybe, but maybe that's not where we need to go. Maybe we need to talk about you and your diet. Like you can't start your morning with fruits or something like that, you know. I might go there because that's not because I want to go there, everyone. It's what the body, is telling me that's the body's priority right now. Checking in with your ancestor is not the priority at this moment, okay? 
So it really depends on the person. So I think it's important that the, you come back to yourself and say, head, get out of the way. Stop thinking about it. What is my priority? What is truly my priority? Is it a sleep? Do I need to sleep more? Do I need to drink more water? Do I need to reach out to my friends? That could be a priority, okay? I've had priorities like, um, you know, the person actually needed to reach out to one of her sisters or something like that and connect with that sister first before she can even change the diet. We don't know what that priority is, but find it from your within your inner voice because that's going to help you lead your path towards your true shining shimmering self. So it depends. Sometimes it's the silence. Sometimes it's turning things off. That can lead you to that. What makes you shimmer? Okay. And I'll just give you a couple more examples. Space to breathe. Space that is empty. So what I did was I cleaned out one of the closets um, and I put it on the Craigslist and I said, free. So I had a lady come and get everything that I was giving away. And then we went to the um, um, donation center as well, local donation center as well. Just creating space to breathe. So it's not just a lung space, but do you have a space in your home that represents your lungs? Lungs are empty organs, right? Lungs are spacious organs. So you want to create spaciousness somewhere in your home also. So you don't want to fill every corner with your knickknacks and in your artwork and this and that. You want to have some space where the air can flow. So this is what my, um, my flower arrangement teacher in Japan taught me when I was 10 years old. You know, when I first sat down with her and I was doing the first arrangement, she taught me that there's a heaven and earth and there's an east and west and north and south and there's the earthy matter of the flower arrangements and there's a sky. And she said, and make sure you don't fill everything in this space. Do not fill it all because you have to keep a wedge somewhere that the air can flow. And so that was something that I was taught early on. Where do you create the space to breathe? Okay. So just look around your space. Look around within you. Do I have the space in me that the breath can flow? So that can help you to shimmer. And genuinely relaxing into your body, knowing that you're okay in this moment. You're okay in this moment that can ignite the light reignite you so i will pause here for a moment i have other things i want to share but i think chris you have other things too i think a few things that come to mind for me one of the things we talked about was um, the importance of what makes you shine when it comes to how you work or how you put yourself out into the world and so one example for me is that I, after I left uh, the, the education world, I had several years where I was essentially in a very unstructured space. I, I was working on building our house and I didn't have a regular job for a long time. Um, there are a lot of things that were very challenging about that. And for me, it coincided with what I mentioned before, that feeling of wanting to appear perfect and maintain a perfectionist uh, approach to how I presented myself. And during that time, the inward disaster was also visible as an outward disaster, or at least it seemed that way to me. And so for a long time, I wasn't, um, I wasn't working more than gig jobs. I was doing jobs as I could get them and I was doing design work here and there. And uh, what, what ended up happening is first I went through a process of feeling really just at the bottom of, of the darkest of dark places that I could be. But as I started to come back from that, 
and work with people again. And part of it was working, um, doing similar work to what Masami's doing, working with individuals to help them with restoring function, because that's how I learned about it is by doing it in my own body. But eventually I got to the point where I realized that for me to really shine and for me to really find out what, what I'm built to do, that's, that's how I think about it. I had to put myself out in the world again. I had to be around other people in a bigger way than what I was doing. So I was still in a sense playing small inside of myself. And so by putting myself back out there. And for me, I, I had a sense for a long time that what I needed was an organization. Because for me, that brings to mind uh, a teaching that I learned along my journey, which, which has to do with what I'll call freedom in restraint. Meaning that if you can scale down and focus in one area and keep yourself to that for a period of time, you can discover that there is vast space, even in that limited area of operation. And so for me, what I've, what I've found is that to really shine and to really feel like I'm working in all of the different ways that I'm, I know that I can, it really helps me to have a space that is somewhat constrained, so like an organization, and to have other people that I can bounce off of and work ideas with and have big, big thoughts and, and imagine with and do all of these things, instead of just sitting by myself thinking about them and wondering how they're going to land and if other people are going to relate to it, I do better to, to work through it in real time and find out if it's going to happen or not. So that's, that's one thing for me is really considering how, how do you shine in your work, what do you need? What are the ingredients that you need to really elicit what's inside and bring it to the outside and to reflect that and, and uh, bounce it off of other people? And then a couple of words came up as I was thinking about this. And one of them had to do, the one word is capacity. This is a, a really important word for me because capacity is about what we are capable of right now. Um, you could also look at capacity as something that you could say it's, it's our potential. The capacity could be part of our potential. But, but for most of us, we're working at limited capacity. We're working at maybe 70% or 60% of what we could do if we lined up all of our energy. And so Back to that image that I gave earlier of the tangled up cords and wires and all of that. I think that's what a lot of us wind up feeling like is we've got all of these connections and commitments and we're plugged in all these different places and they're all mixed up together and it's hard to tell where one starts and another stops. And when we live like that, we end up limiting our own capacity because it's not clear what direction we're moving. It's just, we feel like we're getting pulled and strung all over the place. And, uh, you know, one thing for me is in that, in that mode of having limited capacity, we feel deficient, we feel scarcity, we feel not enough, all of those things that are so easy to have come up when we're not shining and when we're not feeling that internal sense of lightness. And, and this relates to this other word, which is spontaneity. And that's something that I really struggled with for a long time is I resisted being spontaneous because in my limited state of capacity, it's almost like I couldn't afford to do something unplanned. I didn't have enough energy to waste in case it didn't work out, right? There's no coming back if this one goes downhill. So I, I was really controlling. So that was the other side of spontaneity is control. And so if you're finding yourself in that place, of wanting to really control everything that's going on and feeling like you need to be, you must be controlling it or else, or else it's not, not tolerable, it's not possible to allow. But that could be a good indication that you actually are needing a boost in your capacity, that you need to look at how to restore some function and restore some energy so that you're able to allow spontaneity to come back. Because I can tell you, our lives have gotten so crazy in the last couple of years that if we're not spontaneous, 
about most things. I mean, we have to make plans, but we also have to allow for all sorts of unforeseen things to cross our path at any given time that could throw off what we thought was going to happen, but we still have schedules to keep and people to meet and people to talk to, and we just have to keep rolling forward. So that to me all comes together in all of these things. I, I know that my shine and shimmer comes up when I'm able to bounce off of other people and not look everywhere at once, but be in a somewhat constrained space that allows me to focus. And then by focusing on rebuilding my own capacity, my ability to function as me and to meet the needs of my life, that allows me to be responsive and to have that spontaneous way of interacting and, and meeting what needs to happen, meeting what's actually here, not what I think should happen or, or how I think that uh, the world should look according to Chris. So those are some things for me that have been really important in this area. Yeah, thank you. And um, maybe all of you can start to think about what makes you shimmer and shine. When do you feel that? And you know, share that with the chat if you like, or we'd love to read that. And when I was thinking about this, I think this is where I get very excited about working with clients because once we start to develop the person's metabolic energy and their adrenals are a little more plumped up and happy and their thyroid is not shutting down and they're digesting well and their brain is starting to function in a fullest capacity, um, they can't help it but to shine. And so this is where I say to people a lot, my work and Chris's work, we're, we don't do the fancy work. You know, we don't decorate the house with curtains and rugs and give you the beautiful furnitures. You know, we, we're the one that's digging the basement. We're putting the foundation and it's a dirty, heavy, uh, muddy work. And it's not very fancy. It's not very um, pretty to look at at times because I have to talk to you about what are you eating? What are you digesting? What is the toxic stuff you have in your body? And even today, I had another client that has been having major edema and just whole body cannot release the fluids. And we both were able to get to her root canal that she had done about six years ago that really has been causing her to have poison stuff go into her bloodstream, into the lymphatic system. So even though we want to get to other things and decorate the house and talk about beauty and, you know, I would love to go there, but right now, if I don't address her root canal issues, she's not going to be able to truly find her light that is inside her that is trying to shine, but it's like blocked off. It's murky. It's clouded. It um, feels like I'm trying to look at her through foggy lenses, you know? So that's, that's what's important also to always come back to the foundation of it. And another piece of shimmering and shining to me is just pause for a moment right now and we'll both silence ourselves as well, but just want you to think, place your hands maybe and say, what do I dream of? What, what do you dream of right now? Do you have a dream? And dreaming is very important. Not only dream teaches us a lot of things and there's a lot of information coded in our dreams. One piece of information that will really help you is that when people start to go into the cognitive decline, so when they start to have dementia, when they begin to have things like even Parkinson's, where they begin to have Alzheimer's, they actually stop dreaming literally at night, okay? Literally at night, they have no dreams. So dream recalls are very important. And I remember about two, three years before I was diagnosed with MS, I remember one morning waking up going, I don't remember my dreams anymore. I don't think I'm even dreaming. 
And that was a telltale sign for me that I was deteriorating. So that's on a kind of a physiological level, but from your heart and your soul and your spirit level, what do you dream of? So I'll just pause there. Maybe we could just pause and just feel into it. Don't lose your dreams. Dreams are not just for little kids. Your little self in you is dreaming, has a dream or multiple dreams. Tap into that, visualize that, taste that, listen to it. Does that dream have a texture? Does that dream have maybe colors and shapes? Tune in. Good. This lights mind your face so that you know your brain goes, yes, that's good too. The heart says, yes, I told you so. <laughs> and the gut says, yeah, we can do this. Yeah. Because it's usually the brain says, I told you so. I told you we can do it. No, let the brain just go into some other place. Let the heart say, I told you so, brain. Yeah. Don't forget to dream, not just dream your sleep, but dream the day, dream the day. Yeah, that will help you to shimmer. Can I add one example to this, which if you think about, I don't know if any, but any of you have ever done this before. Have you ever gone and bought either flowers or you know, maybe a potted plant or something that you wanna put in the garden and you like it because it's so attractive. There's something about it that's beautiful. And, it, and or maybe it's the sheen of the, the leaves or the petals have, have this incredible vibrance to their colors. But just imagine if you were to take that plant, bring it home and then refuse to water it because that's not your job. You only wanted it for the look. You only wanted it to be beautiful. You, you didn't sign up to have to take care of this thing and maintain it. I mean, come on, that's its job. And so now imagine if you, if you turn that same attitude toward yourself and you look at it, because obviously if you have a plant and you tend it and you take care of it, it's going to continue to shimmer and shine. It's going to continue to produce beautiful flowers. It's going to continue to look vibrant and, and give full expression to everything that it's able to to uh, express. So why would we be any different from that? Why would, we, why would we have the expectation that either we shouldn't have to do all this boring, mundane work, like drinking enough water every day and eating the right foods and getting enough sleep, so boring. This is not what I signed up for. I didn't want this, this life of having to care for this body I never signed up. I didn't ask for any of this, but just take a look at it. If we had an owner's manual, there would certainly be a line in there somewhere of like uh, require some assembly or something like that. You know, you see those things or, you know, some care required something like that, because we, you know, we have this idea that because the body is a natural thing, it should just take care of itself and we shouldn't have to have any responsibility as if we're completely disconnected from it. So just think about that for a moment, you know, make yourself into that little potted plant that you want to tend and make produce beautiful flowers. And, you know, one of the ways that you learn with plants, we've learned this over the years, we've got this wild, wild flower garden. And we, we meant to put a lot of the things that are there into it but a lot of them come back in different places every year. And we just are curious to see what happens every year. But I can tell you, I got into a mode when I wasn't doing too well, where I would pretty much just get angry at having to go out in the heat of summer and water these things and get bitten by mosquitoes and you know be out there in the morning at night to keep these stupid plants alive because they can't just live. You know, Why can't they just pull it together all on their own? That's their job. I'm not, I shouldn't have to babysit them. You know, that was the attitude that I had. And, and of course they didn't do well in those years. Uh, whereas 
more recently in the last couple of years that we've really, I mean, for me, I'll speak for myself, Nasami is much better about it. But for me, really appreciating, oh, you know, these things are living things. They need, it's, it's a coexistence here. They need support. They need help. They need attention. They need love. And, and of course, you can have any number of endless aha moments if you turn that same attention onto yourself. And so, and, and it, be, it begins with these mundane, boring little things that you have to do every day that your mind doesn't care about because the mind loves a puzzle. The mind wants to do a thousand things where one step would do, okay? It wants to stay open-ended and curious and be occupied forever and ever so that your ego can always be on top and the boss and in charge of every situation. So anyway, I went longer than I meant to. Should I read some of those um, comments that came through? Yeah. So, so to the question, what makes you shimmer and shine from the inside out? And Diana said, I love to refresh and rearrange my home regularly. I've been doing interior design for 26 years and creative projects still make me lose my sense of time. I love it. Gardening is my passion too. Beautiful things make me shine and reset my space. Uh, the, the teacher in me wants to just bring up what Diane said in terms of this concept of flow. And some of you may know this one, but flow is essentially where in psychology they talk about this where the challenge of a situation meets your skill level so that the two things are, are meeting in this zone where you're appropriately challenged for the level of skill that you currently have and those are the times when we really immerse ourselves into the task and we lose sense of time we lose sense of self and and we pretty much blend with everything. That's that becoming one. And that's something that if you work in creative projects and gardening, you certainly have had that experience at some point. So just think about that. What gives you flow in your life? That's very much related to this first question. Okay. The next one, Joanne says, when I can create beauty in my envi environment, sorry, I'm stumbling in my environment. So again, beauty is the theme indoor and outside, when I'm helping other people and really making a difference, when I figure out the puzzle of a child's special needs, when I'm able to relax and be in nature, when I can have a refreshing piece of fresh organic watermelon on a hot day, and the list goes on. Mm. Jamila says, I'm shining more in my interactions with new people after moving to a new state thanks to your suggestions about more water with pinches of Celtic sea salt, along with more potassium in my day as well. Thank you. And Richard says, what makes me shimmer and shine is when I can be more in touch with my heart, not letting my ego stifle me. I shimmer and shine when I just go outside and listen to feelings that are coming through, being open to my higher joyful self. Thank you, Richard. And Joanne added, I dream of having grandchildren that I know will bring me joy, playing with them at the beach in the sand and water, sun and wind. And Melinda says, <laughs> this is so simple yet so profound. Well, I, you know, I think one thing to add is that when, I think I read this many, many years ago, but when a person is in the war zone um, and they're just trying to survive. They have a hard time dreaming, uh, dreaming at night also during the sleep, but dreaming requires a sense of safety and sense of groundedness and sense of being taken care of by you and others. Um, it's really difficult to dream, dream of something other than this because you're just trying to survive. That's why check in with yourself and say, do I, do I have a connection with my dreams? Do I um, have a sense that I can visualize, like I can visualize what I wish to accomplish or see happen or manifest? Don't lose touch with that dream. 
because then um, it, you know that the, you might be pushing your nervous system too much or you might have gotten too rigid in your thinking or you've become too pro programmatic, is that the word? Yeah, that where you're just only living your day by saying um, A must lead to B and B must lead to C and it's become too linear in your thinking. And the rigidity does not help you to create dreams. So just, you know, it's a great way to gauge yourself that way too. So I'll keep reading a couple more of these. Uh, Diana said, mostly I'm looking for anything that feels yummy to me. She says, great verbiage per Chris. And for those of you that don't know what that refers to, we were talking, Masami mentioned this. This is something that sometimes when I've had a really long day and I finally, finally get off my feet and get into bed, sometimes that sensation of slipping into bed feels delicious. And sometimes I'll just lie there and go, yummy, you know, bed. And so... Um, but, but, you know, Diana, having said that, what it also makes me think of immediately is that imagine, so the things that are yummy, those are good cues, but you know, what about the ones that are challenging? Because if you think about shimmer and shine, how many of you ever were relegated to polishing the silver candlesticks or tableware at Thanksgiving or Christmas as a kid, right? Somebody always had to get that job. I know for me, whenever I got it, I resented it, you know, just sitting there rubbing these things with the little cloth and just having to do it over and over and over. And it felt such, you know, just joyless, thankless work. And, you know, but then when they're done, there's something really just striking about it. The shine, you see this, you know, this uh, polished surface reflecting other light and it amplifies the whole mood of, of the space when it's done. And so what I was going to say is there is something too about looking into the things that challenge us because behind that challenge might be a little hidden shine that we hadn't yet learned about ourselves. So just something to be on the lookout for. Uh, okay, I'm gonna move on. Mary Basse says, I shimmer and I connect with my friends when I connect with my friends. And now I'm realizing that I really need to reconnect with my family. I didn't realize how much I had pulled away from them, especially since my parents passed. I felt like they didn't really care about me since I was never around. And recently I began hearing from my niece and nephews, nieces and nephews, who seemed to be so interested in connecting with me. Again, so grateful. Mm. And Richard added, when I go inside, shimmering and shining. Sharon says, I dream of living in a community of like-minded persons creating healthy homes. I've done this for myself and I want to be in a community. So that's a good way to align your, the dream that Masami is talking about and point all of your energies in that direction. And they, they have a way of showing up. You know, we were just talking with someone yesterday who has somewhat lived his life in a very spontaneous way. He's just very open to all experiences. And as a result of that, he has made incredible connections with some very well-known people over the course of his life that he's become friends with, not by intending to do it, not by setting out to meet uh, interesting, famous people, but because he just had questions that he was curious about and he stayed open to them and he kept asking them and he would bump into people that knew people that knew people and before he knew it, he was connected to all sorts of different people. And I, I think that that is a reflection of this internal alignment matching the external way that we put ourselves into the world. And so whatever that dream might be, whatever that direction might be that we're feeling, it needs to match up inside and outside. Because if, we're, if, if we're at odds internally if we're feeling in contradiction to what we wish for it's never going to happen how could it we're pulling in two different directions so we're lucky if we're even doing better than you know being stuck in place so just keep that in mind if you have a wish you know put everything you have toward it okay finally penny says that's where i feel i'm at survival mode 
Nice to have an explanation of why I find it difficult to dream aspirational dreams, though I do still night dream a lot. And that night dreaming is a great place to begin to connect. If you can pay attention to what are the images that your body, your brain are bringing to your conscious attention. That's a, that's a way for you to start to get in touch with what it is that your life is, is asking of you right now. Yeah, then the night dream and the daydream can begin to support you. So you, you have scaffoldings that can help you to lift you up. So um, yeah, dream is a very interesting topic when I'm not just talking about the nighttime, but like I said, I've met a lot of people that just cannot tap into their heart's desire, what the heart is yearning for. And it's a very uh, powerful exercise. If you ever get a chance to do this, you could do it on your own too by looking at the mirror, but you just deeply ask yourself, what am I yearning for? And if you have a friend that you can do this with or a family member you trust that you can do this with, you just sit across from each other and you just ask that of the other person and be asked of that question too and say, what am I yearning for? What is my heart yearning for? It takes a little bit of time for most of us to tap into it, to language it. But um, we, we will never lose that. It's in us, but sometimes just trying to survive the day to day, um, surviving the heat waves for some of us and some of you and just the day to day. How do I make today work financially, emotionally, physically, relationship wise? It is difficult to tap into the daydreaming side. But maybe before you even get to the dream side, just ask your heart, what am I, what is my heart yearning for today, today? Maybe just a little piece of silence. Um, when I feel stuck, one thing I do is I exercise my olfactory. Okay, this sounds crazy maybe, but the sense of smell is incredible because the sense of smell goes straight to the limbic part of the brain. So the center part of the brain that is very much connected to the brain stem and right above it. So when I feel stuck, I will go for a walk and I find people's rose gardens. And I literally walk into like the, they, if they, I don't go into the backyard, but I go into the front yard and Chris will be like, she, he's gotten used to me doing this. I would literally walk over to the people's roses and I stick my face in there and I take deep breaths multiple times from multiple different colors because it literally shifts me. And many of you that have studied essential oils know this, that the smell of rose is got the, one of the highest vibrations, right? Out of all essential oils. So when you feel stuck, when you feel like I'm just surviving, I don't even know what my heart is yearning for except to just break down and cry, find roses, okay? Find people's wild rose gardens and like literally walk in there and smell or just knock on people's doors and say, do you mind if I smelled your roses? Oh, they would love you for it because they put so much love into creating these gorgeous roses. So. Use your sinuses, everyone, when you feel stuck, because that totally shifts your brain and shifts your first chakra. So how you walk about your life on this earth, how you connect with the other tribes, when you feel stagnant with the community that you're in, smell something different, okay? But choose things that will uplift you, and often the flowers will do that. Um, if you can access roses, I would say roses are the best for that, for shifting, okay? But you may have other flowers or other smell, like Chris's favorite things to smell is ponderosa pines. So he will stick his face right up against the, the you know, the trunk of the tre tree, and he's just like loving it. I, I like it, but it doesn't do a whole lot for me. Another one that I know Chris loves is also because we live in a high desert, we will go and just brush up against the sage, wild sage, 
and would just smell it in our hands. Wow, that shifts you. So if you feel stagnant, if you feel like you're just not able to find the connections, look into how do I exercise the sinuses and the, the sense of smell. And if you're having sense of smell issues, definitely look into taking some zinc, okay? Zinc is a mineral that gets lost when people start to have sinus issues, smell issues, and the taste, okay? So those are a couple of the things that the maybe you can look into, okay? So if I can extend one last plant analogy before we go, I want you all to just think about yourself as a plant, okay? Every plant, roses and otherwise, needs some combination of nutrients, water, and sunlight. So what are the basic, basic things that you know you need physically, emotionally, relationally, environmentally, spiritually? What are the, the most simple, basic things that you know you require and how can you be sure that you're giving those to yourself? You're not making it an annoying task like I was talking about earlier that you didn't sign up for, but you're ask, actually doing it. If you remember this theme that we've been on in a, in a broader sense is loving, acts of loving. So how can you bring that energy of loving to yourself from that level of basic, basic, basic care for your being? And, and I, for some reason, the Pink Floyd song came to mind. So just, so shine on you crazy diamond, wherever you are, and, and do that by taking care of those things that you know you need to thrive. Thank you. And Penny, thank you. I read you. Thank you. She says, thank you. Great tips. I'm crying. So it must, it must have been what I needed to hear. I actually could feel that you were crying. I knew that because I wanted to cry with you actually. So um, it's you going to get through this. And she said, plus it's 116 degrees outside and 88 in my house. I know the heat waves sending you cool air. And she says, I love roses and especially fir trees. I will search some out. Yes, please search them out because they will vibrationally shift you. And when you vibrationally shift, you will match up with the other vibrational beings that are uplifting and wanting to change with you. Okay. And uh, Mary's, Mary Bossa says, there's a reason why people always refer to smell the roses. Yes, you got it. Yeah. So with that, I think um, continue to tap into your heart, what your heart is yearning for. Because if you could really listen to that, you will have the ingredients for you to continue to shimmer and to shine. We're all meant to do that. We're all meant to, to shine. I like the word shimmer better. So um, just continue to shimmer because that just moves with it seasonally and day, morning to night. Uh, find things that shimmer around you. Maybe tree leaves, they shimmer with the sunlight and the wind. Find answers as often as you can through nature. Find groups like this that will help you to shimmer, help you to uplift you. Because, you know, life is short, everyone. So I say don't waste your time too much on things that just drag you down, okay? Go, go towards things that will uplift you. Yeah, thank you, Richard. I'm going to click on that so I make sure to look at that. Did you see that image, Chris? Do you see it? I don't see it yet. Yeah, we'll work, work on that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a it's a rose. It's a yellow oh, rose. Thank you, Richard. He's a, he's one of those people. Everyone, Richard is a shimmering being. 
So pay attention to Richard. He he's a shimmering from head to toe being. There, here's a quick glimpse of what Richard shared. Perfect. All right. Thanks, thank Richard. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, let's let's wrap up cosmic souls, beautiful souls that you are. And um, Chris and I haven't decided whether we're going to be doing this on the 5th of July, are we? Maybe we'll talk about it and we'll announce it. I'm suspecting we're probably going to skip a week because it's a holiday and we're trying to, to uh, be better about minding our boundaries when it comes to taking time off. So let's plan on meeting back in two weeks. Okay. All right. Well, we'll be in touch. And please don't forget to watch the, the another summit that I'm on. I'm on Thursday. So I hope you can go and watch it. So I will be with all of you soon. And we love you. And uh, be safe for 4th of July for those of you that are in the United States. And go smell the roses.